Hello youth! It is now Sunday the 23rd of August uh, and we are continuing our series looking at prayer. My name is David. Uh, this week we are part two of our video looking at who we pray to. Uh, specifically we're looking at the Lord's Prayer and we're continuing uh, exploring the Lord's Prayer. At the end of last week's video, if you caught that, we were asked the question, how do you feel that by praying you're able to help usher along God's kingdom? Uh, which is sort of amazingly powerful that God entrusts us um, and allows us to be part of that process. So I hope that has been challenging and eye-opening for you. Uh, today we're going to continue looking at the Lord's Prayer, as I said. Uh, so we'll kick that off right now, firstly by hearing what some of their respondents thought to last week's question, and then carrying on. Cool, I'll see you real soon. It's actually crazy, and something that I need to be doing more of if I have the power to usher in God's kingdom. Um, I should be praying for the people that don't know Jesus yet, and that's not something I do very often. It's pretty cool. I, it makes me feel like it's not just God doing work, but we're actually working um, for God and working with God. I think it gives us some responsibility, and it's, it's not just God doing everything. He actually invites us in to do His work with Him. Honestly, I'm, I'm super stoked about it. Uh, I think it's awesome that uh, somewhere across the world, I couldn't, I don't even know someone, but I could have perhaps an impact on them through the way that I pray for them. Overwhelming. I'm a sinner. Like, how can God use a sinner to do that? So, we invite God's kingdom to come, and also for God's will to be done. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. A really important key here for us to be aware of is that last line, as it is in heaven. This line applies to all three parts of the prayer that we've just discussed. God's name, his kingdom, and his will. Jesus is saying that we should ask and desire that all of those would be realized here on earth as they are in heaven. That God's name would be known and kept holy on earth as it is in heaven where his holiness is supreme. That God's kingdom would come on earth as it is in heaven, meaning that it would be here just as it is there in perfection, and that God's will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we cannot forget this. The final part of this section of the Lord's Prayer is all about acknowledging that God's will is ultimately of greater importance than our own. I get it. When it comes to prayer, we think we know what we want, how we want it, and when we want it, and so we pray for it. And I've prayed prayers like this before. Have you? Oh God, please bless the plans that I've laid out on my own behalf before you in the timeline that I have for you with the outcomes that I've asked you for. Amen. But Jesus is teaching us the only way to pray is not my will, but God's will. These can be difficult prayers to pray. From our perspective, we think we know what's best and what needs to happen. But as I get older and walk through more of my faith journey, I realize that time and time again, God's plan is better, so much better. I meet people all the time that say things like, I'm so glad that this never worked out. Had it, I would have been seriously in trouble. We think we know what is best, but our plan and our view of what is to come or could come is really limited. I remember the first time I ever went through a corn maze. We'd taken a group of about 100 teenagers with us for an evening event, and I had with me my friend Joe. Now, Joe loved games and puzzles. He was crazy about that stuff. And when we got to the maze, I remember asking Joe how to beat the maze. And his teaching to me was that I needed to simply take a right-hand turn every time I possibly could. If I hit a dead end, turn around and then take the next right, and then I would eventually beat the maze. 
So I set off, determined that I would win and beat the maze. Unfortunately, it didn't work for me. And after an hour and a half, I was very, very stuck and very, very lost. It was dark and cold and I was miserable, but still really stubborn. And I remember when the guy on the scaffolding in the middle of the maze finally shined his light down on me and asked if I needed help because our group ultimately needed to leave. I didn't want to listen to him. I told him that I was taking every right and that I would eventually beat it, and he assured me that I would simply not make it out in time. And so I finally relented and told him that he could help. He gave me three simple instructions. Go forward, turn left, then a second right, then left, and within minutes, I was out. I was so frustrated that he could solve the puzzle for me so quickly while I had struggled with it for so long. But the thing is, my perspective was very limited. I could not see what was beyond, only that which was right in front of me. But he, his perspective was limitless. He saw the whole maze from his vantage point. And even better, he was the one who designed and created the maze. And so he could, with such ease, direct me where I needed to go. This is so often the case with my prayers and with my releasing what I want to have happen to God, the one who created everything and knows what the best path forward is every time. Jesus would profoundly put this prayer into action during his last few days on earth. On the night of his betrayal, knowing the full weight of all that was going to be coming his way and falling to his knees in anguish before his father alone in the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus pleaded these desperate words. My father, if it's possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. He's saying, please provide a different solution. Please, if there's any other way that doesn't involve the cross and my separation from you, let me have it. He longed for a different plan, something that would cause less pain. But he knew the only way for God and man to be reconciled would be his death and resurrection. And so he concludes his prayer by saying this, yet I want your will to be done, not mine. I want you, God, to lead because you know better. You have the ultimate plan. You can see the end which I simply cannot, and so I trust you. I trust you. You can see the end, which I simply cannot, and so I trust you. I trust that you know what is best for me in my relationships and my schooling and my job and in the calling that you've placed on my life. In a world that can be so confusing, I choose to lay down what I think I know is best for myself for what you know is best for me. In our next episode, Jesus moves towards the practical things that we're to pray for as well. But those come intentionally after this first part. We start with a heart posture that says, I trust you because you are the Holy One, the one who is sovereign and supreme and set apart. You are the King who is coming and you are the one whose will and plan is infinitely better than I could ever hope or imagine. This, Jesus says, is how we are to pray. Let's pray this prayer together today. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. I'm going to lay this down at the cross and surrender my intentions behind what I'm praying for. Like whatever God's going to use this moment for, whether it's good or it's bad, it's just it's me surrendering my expectations. I am releasing my control over whatever I'm praying for and submitting to what Jesus has for that situation. I think that I know what I want to be done is the best, but obviously Jesus has a better plan for what's going on. I know that 
I don't have all the right answers, like, and I don't see the future. So, like, as much as I can pray for something to happen, like, in the back of my mind, I wish I said it more, like, your will be done, like, this is what I want, but you know what's best. Even though I might see it this way, you see it, like, God sees it in a way better way. And so ultimately, I would rather his will be done because it's going to be better. Just with deciding what to do after graduating from high school and going into university or work and just where God wanted me and where I felt called. And I just, I prayed so often, like, God will go where you want me to go and your will be done. Um, and it, it took a while to find that and I still think that I'm still discovering that, but I know God's will is being done. Welcome back to me. Um, yeah, so not my will but yours be done. What does that mean to you? Uh, to me, it means the idea of putting my plans in, in God's hands and knowing that God's plans are far greater than my own um, and far bigger than my own and relying on him rather than just requesting of God to do what I want him to do because my own plans and ideas are minuscule in comparison. So I hope you have thought about that question, discussed it with your friends, family, brother and sister, yourself. Um, yeah. Please feel free to reach out to me at youth at crossculture.net.au. Let me know what you thought of this video. Let, you know what, let me know what, how you're going. Um, how's school going? You doing all right? Hope to see you coming along Friday night Zoom Youth. That is open to all youth. Uh, if you're not getting our emails, also send me an email at youth at crossculture.net.au and you'll be put on the mailing list uh, so we can send you emails about that. Fantastic. Let me pray. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, we just want to uh, thank you that even in these very trying times that we are able to meet online and continue to grow in relationship with you. Uh, Lord, I pray that through these videos, um, we'll all be able to uh, grow deeper in our knowledge and understanding of you. I pray that you will draw us closer to you. Uh, reveal yourself to us, Lord, uh, that we may be able to put our trust in you more and more every day. Pray for those of us who are at school. Help us doing online learning. Uh, it can be a tough time doing online learning at the moment, but I pray that you give us the motivation uh, to do it and the knowledge and, and strength to get through it. I uh, pray that the coronavirus will continue to uh, dissipate. Lord, we thank you that over the past week the numbers have been uh, dropping. Just pray that that will continue to be the case and Victoria will make a full recovery very soon. We pray all these things in your mighty name. Amen. All right, youth, hope you're doing all right. Love yous. Catch you soon. <laughs>